I'm Christine Blanchett, and joining me on the closing act of using an entertainment program is Drew Arnott. He is an award winning singer, songwriter, and co founder of the Canadian band Strange Advance. Drew is back on the show to talk about the upcoming tour and other projects. So, welcome back, Drew. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe time is flying. We we're just talking before we went on air and I mean it's just been it's so exciting to have you back and now you're going back on tour and I understand it'll be May 24th in Sydney which will be your first time yeah performing. this year that, that's the first uh, show of this year yeah wow and we're looking forward to that it's I've never been there but it's apparently it's a very nice little theater so uh, looking forward to it yeah, it's the first time for everything, right? <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. Well, we love Victoria, and um, and and Sydney. Actually, it was uh, a few years ago. I saw the Trooper were playing there, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I looked into it and into the theater, and I thought, well, you know, there's an idea, and Sydney's a lovely little town, so uh, we're going to go visit it. Yes. And it's 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 a small audience too, right? Which is like, do you do you prefer performing in front of large audiences or small, or does it just depend? Well, no, you know something. Uh, it all depends. First of all, back in the '80s, our very first shows in Toronto, um, the actually the very first show we played in Toronto was in front of twelve thousand people at Ontario Place. Wow! So that was like, and you know, of course, when there's twelve thousand people there, you're only looking. You can only see the people in the front rows, and uh, and so it's it doesn't have that big an impact. But then sometimes when you look out and you see, you know, everywhere you can look, there's people there. It's a uh, it's a little bit daunting, but the the nice thing about uh, we're doing a variety of shows. Uh, we do the Sydney Theater, so that's like 300 some odd people in this nice little theater in Sydney on May the 24th. Then we ship our gear off to Toronto, and we and we're we're headlining the uh, the Sound of Music Festival in Burlington. So and they get like half a million people there over the the three or four days that they mm -hmm. run this thing. So there'll be you know 20, 30 thousand people, and um, but. The difference is the 300 people that are going to be at the, the Mary Winspear Theater are all our fans. You know, yeah. they're there to see us specifically and they're very excited and they know all the, the deep cuts uh, on past records and stuff. And, and anything we do is just wonderful for them. Whereas when you're playing in front of 20 or 1,000, 20, 30,000 people, it's like they're not all your fans. You know, they're there to see one of the other acts on the bill or, or who knows what. But uh, or there's some guy yelling out for you know Nickelback, Nickelback, you know. Play. It's like <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> you got strange advance. So uh, that's the only difference. Um, but anyway, we're we're hoping we'll be able to win win over the uh, the people that uh, aren't familiar with us. Yeah. So you know why now go back on tour? Like you know how? You know something. This has been such a charge. Uh, a boost for everybody in the band, you know, because, you know, we've all done our different things over the years. And uh, like I moved away from live performance. Well, uh, for the most part, I joined my dad's band about, you know, 15 years or so ago. And he had a little dance band that played music from the thirties and the forties and the fifties and stuff. And uh, that was the extent of my live performance since the days of strange advance, you know, and which I very much enjoyed because uh, I'm actually a drummer originally, so it gave me mm -hmm. a chance to to get back on the drums, and that was fun. But uh, but everyone else in the band, you know, they've kind of drifted away from the live performance. You know, I mean, we're of that age. You know, we're more retirement age than anything else. So so it's given the band just this great opportunity to have that thrill again of you know mm -hmm. playing that music in front of uh you know a small large audience it doesn't matter it's just a, a very fun fun thing for a musician to do yes and 
and looking back, right, of all, uh, I guess it's like over 30 years, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. The other, <laughs> the other cool aspect of it is, when we first started touring and playing live, we didn't, well, first of all, we didn't tour until after our second album. And, um, mm -hmm. and so we had no idea who our fans were, you know. So then finally we're out there in front of them and, and for the most part, they're like high school students, college students, you know, young people. And, and we, when we go out there, we still have those ex high school, ex college students, except now they're like in their fifties or sixties or something, you know, and, uh, and getting a chance to meet them and hearing all their stories, you know, Oh, you know, I, we played this song for our first dance at our wedding or, or this yes. song was played at our mom's funeral and, and all this kind of thing. So you get, get to hear all these wonderful stories and, uh, and, and we have the time now to, to listen and to, to, to hang out with the fans and hear all the stories. It's, it's quite an experience. Yes, and for, for songs like, um, like you're gonna be performing in Sydney and then Toronto, but um, do you have like a repertoire of songs that you'll be singing? Like, does it matter or how, did, how does that work? Well, you know, that's a good question, Dom. First of all, there's the songs that you have to sing. And, and those are the songs that, you know, got the most radio play and stuff that people expect you to play. And then what we're, what we're doing is we're delving into the back catalog and we're digging up a song from you know this album from that album that you know nice. that hasn't been played for the the last 40 years so uh so it's fun to mix that up and also we're experimenting with you know some covers of favorite songs from back in the day and that's a lot of fun too you know so yeah, yeah it's it's a mix of of old and new that's wonderful and so toronto and where where else like um because you're gonna come well, back to vancouver right Is well that, you know yeah we're we're f we're basically flying out to toronto flying back flying back to toronto <laughs> fly back it's seriously we're uh, at least three times uh this year we'll be going back and forth and um yeah so so uh, ontario is basically our our home base because that's where the vast majority of Canada lives, you know, but mm -hmm. we're also doing, um, uh, we're also going to Montreal. So that's going to mm -hmm. be a lot of fun. The last time we were there, um, we did a much music special. And, mm -hmm. uh, and as a matter of fact, I have fond memories of that trip because it was the one time in my life where uh, I had like a Beatlemania moment. Um, we were, we were doing the, the television uh, show in this big club, La Spectrum. Um, and um, and yeah. we and we left uh, uh, on a break, a dinner break or something, and we come out the side doors, and we look up the street. It's like, what's going on? And there's this group of girls. They're like, there they are, there they are, and they're all running after us. So and we're like, run away, run away. Who knows what's gonna happen? So anyway, um, it was it was a fun time. Yeah, it's like we run, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were running all right. <laughs> no, I mean, that's such great. And you know, like, with the landscape of performing has changed, and it's so great. Like I said, congratulations on, you know, booking and uh, and playing back on the road. And But there's a lot to it. Like, you were talking about um, bringing your gear. That's a lot. I can't even imagine. Well, here's the thing. Uh, most bands of our uh, vintage they go out and they do what they call fly-in gigs. So mm -hmm. they basically jump on a plane and some of them don't even bring a guitar. As a matter of fact, one band I know, the drummer doesn't even pair, bring a pair of drumsticks. Everything is supplied for them at the other end and they just jump on stage, you know, play their show, off the stage, back on the plane, they go home. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't really do that because we're very specialized. A, a lot of our equipment is very customized and, uh, and not available for rent anywhere else. So we have to bring our own. So we mm -hmm. have to load up a couple pallets of, of equipment, especially because we work with uh, Tim mm -hmm. Hill, uh, this visual artist who just does fantastic work, artistic work on stage. We've got, you know, big screens, projections, uh, you know, like six or eight projectors, you know, lasers, all this is going on and we have to bring that with us. So mm -hmm. it means that, uh, it, and really the bottom line is 
it, it means that we need to make more money on the road than than your average band because it costs us to to, to bring all these extra crew bring extra you know equipment all that stuff it all adds up so what we en have ended up doing is promoting our own shows we book the venue we advertise it um, you know usually the venue sells a ticket so we don't have to worry about that and um, and and what it ha what happens though is uh, you know we were talking about this earlier because we're the promoter yes. we get to decide how seats are allocated and <clears throat> And because things are so tough out there for so many people, um, you know, I, I hear stories about people, you know, cutting back on food, yeah. you know, and, and, and coming to a show like ours, it's like, you know, just not within their reach. So, uh, so then we've set aside, you know, a percentage of seats at each show. And, and if you can't afford the seat, you know, send us an email, and uh, and as long as there's seats left, you know, you will have a, a free seat to the show. Oh, that's wonderful yeah. to have that, you know, because you talk about inflation and yes. Yeah, so what do you do? Go to a concert or buy groceries, you know? Yeah, and, exactly. And 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 what what um, made you decide to do this? I guess you know, watching the news and thinking, well, yeah. you know, you care for your fans. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what happened was, you know, sometimes a, a fan would reach out to me and say, listen, mm -hmm. I'd love to be at the show. I just can't afford to do it. And it's like, as I say, we're promoting our shows. So I says, well, don't worry, I'll, I'll comp you a couple of seats. You know, it's not a big deal. But then I realized there's a lot more people out there that don't have a personal connection with me, you know, but they love the band. They want to see the show. And, uh, and I don't think, you know, I don't think being a broke person uh, should be a bar to, you know, attending a, a concert. Uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, music is for everyone. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. wonderful, as I said. And, and, you know, for people who are interested, um, they, they send an email, right? And then you, and then you go from yeah, there. If, if, if you're a Strange Advance fan, and I'm guessing not too many people are going to show up if they're not, but <laughs> if you are a Strange Advance fan, uh, send an email to info at strangeadvance.com and yes. uh then tell us what's going on and if, if we can do it if it's if we have the seats available we'll 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 give you free seats yes now for tickets to go to your show or your upcoming shows uh, where can they go well um you can go to our 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 uh, website i guess strangeadvance.com and you'll find uh links to to tickets there and um yeah, and uh, you know, we're uh, Facebook is apparently the place now to advertise shows like this. So we're doing a lot of advertising on Facebook. So you'll, I'm sure you'll run across the ad. But as I say, go go to strangeadvance.com if you if in doubt, and you'll find links there. True. Before we leave, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, <clears throat> I'm, I'll just share this with you. Um, as I was saying, this time out like after every show we we head into the lobby and we hang out with the fans back in the 80s you didn't do that there was a, a big gulf between you know the performer on stage and and the fan that came to see the show you know and it would be very rare that you would get to actually you know meet people but it's the best part of the show for me you know getting oh. to hear the stories you know getting to actually meet these people and and I see them, you know, leaving comments uh, on fa our Facebook pages and, and stuff. And but you know, so now I can actually put a face to the to the name and uh, and it's it's a wonderful experience getting to hear all the stories. That's that's what I love the most. You know what an opportunity, and it's intimate, and and you just feel there's such a connection. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Um, yeah. yeah, Drew, I. I loved having you come back, and it was so much fun to talk to you again. And can't wait for your to hear more and uh, for tickets again. Go to your website or Facebook. And yeah. yes, thank you. My 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 pleasure, Christine. Hope to see you at the show. You will. <laughs> thank you.
Hi, I'm Christine Blanchett, and joining me on the Closing Act Music and Entertainment Program is a very special guest, Malcolm Perry, who is a newspaper columnist and photographer with an impressive career. For over 40 years, he's had his thumb on the pulse of the city of who's who. He's Finally, there's a documentary out there about Malcolm and his work called Society Page. And welcome, welcome so much, Malcolm, to the show. I'm just so excited to speak with you today. And congratulations on a documentary about you. Um, did you ever think there would be a documentary? I hope there wouldn't be. Yeah. Yes. It took, it took a little convincing to, uh, with uh, Kevin Eastwood before he did it. But anyway, he found a way to uh, convince <laughs> that it would be a good idea. And it was, I think it was. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, and he, you met him through one of your many, many events, right? And he approached you and, and said, let's do a documentary, Malcolm. Yeah, I think the main thing is my work, it's really not about me, it's about all the people I dealt with. And, yes. uh, you know, yeah, so, I mean, how does it feel, though, to have a documentary about your life and looking through your lens of photographing people and writing? I mean, how does it feel to be there now? It's live streaming on the Knowledge Network. Well, it was interesting to see it. And um, it was interesting to hear some other people whom I respect who were in the picture and said things that weren't overtly flattering, but that were, you know, their uh, honest opinions. And uh, that was interesting. Yeah, so it, it, in the documentary, I've watched it, and very educational about your life work in the history of Vancouver, of the events. And when did you know you wanted to be um, you know, with the town talk, you, you were doing it once a week, right? And then you were doing it twice a week and then three times a week. I mean, I mean, how, how did your love of photography uh, start? Just almost since I was a little kid. I was, yeah. Was yes. in, mainly through my dad. Mm -hmm. It's a saying in this world that a lot of men, and probably it applies to women too, that they often do professionally what their fathers did as a hobby. And yes. dad had a, a hobby of photography, and he's pretty good at it. And it certainly appealed to me early on. He had a hobby in carpentry. And my yes. other brother, middle brother, became a hell of a good pattern maker. He could make anything with wood. And my dad had a hobby, hobby for music, playing the piano, and my other brother, became a perfect a professional keyboard player. So, as far as I'm concerned, in our family, it was true. We all did professionally what our dad did for a hobby. That's what it's mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you were doing the same as your mom did for a hobby. I don't know. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And it, did it bring up, like, memories, nostalgia, right? Going back to the beginning uh, and then going down memory lane of t going to so many events and uh, but how many events did you go to like, oh, in, oh. <laughs> like <Gee>. in, <laughs> how many grains of sand are there on the beach I don't know I went to hundreds oh. of events. Yeah. you know that's what reporters do you know you could say to uh, you know to another staff reporter at the Vancouver Sun how many political meetings did you go to? How many cars yes. did you cover? <laughs> no, I mean, who knows how many? It's just what you do for your job. Yes. Yeah, and Melbourne, may I ask you, do you have any favorite photos? No. No? I don't think so. I, um, I can sort of turn that question around a bit in the sense that if you, when you do this, you don't really think of all the pictures you take. That's just your job. 
So mm -hmm. in the course of Kevin making the movie and me seeing the movie and seeing all the photos, of course I remember every one of them. And what maybe surprised me a bit, I thought, hey, they weren't too bad. Some of them are pretty good. <laughs> And you don't think of that when you're going along. Yes. Yes, and can you share any funny stories or highlights? Um, the highlights I could share, the most dramatic ones, were ones that didn't appear in the movie, but dealt with other people that I interviewed, the people of what you might call a deeply criminal nature, very serious, bad people. There are also the highlights, but they never, for all sorts of good reasons, they didn't appear in the movie. Well, what's that? Somebody calling? That's the front door bill. Yes. <laughs> no, because, yeah, so um, what has what has the feedback been like? Oh, I, remember. I do remember a highlight now. Oh, in the good. Picture, uh, yeah, in the photo, there's a, in the, in, sorry, in Kevin's picture, there is a shot that I took from the top of one of the towers of the Lionsgate Bridge. And, uh, you know, a very wide angle shot. I actually won a photo competition with it. I won $500, which was, wow. you know, uh, oh, but it, transpired for all the wrong reasons. I wasn't due to make that picture, take that photo. I was editor of Vancouver Magazine at the time. We had a photographer assigned to do the shot. Everything with all arranged with the people who operate the bridge to have someone go up inside the tower. And by the way, if you ever go up inside a tower of the Lionsgate Bridge on a hot sunny day, you will find a hell of a lot of birds in there, and birds, they leave a lot of guano, so it's rather smelly and hot. But anyway, yeah. about 10.30, we got a phone call from the assigned photographer that he was scared. He was too, he couldn't go up, he'd lost his nerve. Yeah, what could he do now? We've made all these arrangements. So, raced home to where I am now in my home in near to Deep Cove, changed my clothes, put on running shoes, raced back, got a wide angle lens, went up the tower, bingo. So I guess I, you could call that a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good photo too. Yes, oh my goodness. No, thank you for sharing. And oh, and I asked you um, just a moment ago, if I may ask again, what has the feedback been like? What is the what? Feedback. How's the feedback been like for the, the documentary? Oh, I guess half a dozen people have called and said, hey, I saw your ugly mug on the screen. Yes. <laughs> and generally, seem, people seem to be at the show itself. People, well, people are always going to be complimentary when you're face to face. They might not punch you in the nose. Um, but things are, you know, I got a text message this morning from a Irish woman in London I haven't seen for decades, and, and uh, she, she uh, said, hey, the world is abuzz with your movies, but who knows? Somebody, yes. Somebody's seen it. You've seen it. Yes. No, it's, it's lovely. It's a really, um, you know, I find it educational, and it goes, like, looking through your lens, and, but do you have a you take you've taken many many photos and you know you, you work for the Vancouver Sun and Vancouver magazine but have you had many people ask to have a photo taken with you no oh so occasionally yeah yes okay, yeah. <laughs> when you're out uh, that sort of grew with the development of what we call the age of the selfie like when I started doing this yes. Nobody really thought of that. But now you can't go anywhere without people <laughs> photographing themselves. That's it is with the development of the selfie that I've had more of that. I hope they weren't totally disappointed with the shots they took. Uh, no, I mean, 
<laughs> no, I was just like, you know, one of the many, many events you've gone to, if I may say, you would look and you would study the room and then take take a photo and, but it, it it's, takes talent. Um, did, are you self-taught? Did you take, uh, you know, courses? Like how did you become such a successful photographer and, and writer? I'm not quite following that because I'm not. Oh yes, yet. did did how did you how did you um, have such a great eye for photography and well, for writing? I don't know if I have a particularly great eye. Yeah. Um, the, the, the photographs that I constitute that show and pretty well all the ones that I took in my job are taken about as far from where I am now and yes. where I am on the monitor. That is. Within yes. so, with a moderately wide angle lens, close up. There's quite a hell of a lot of composition involved here. You're just sort of pointing it from a, from a little higher up. So I don't think that's you could really dis, you know, distinguish that by saying it's an eye. It's just it's a snapshot. Really, that's what I call my work with thousands, thousands of snapshots. Malcolm, what is next for you? What, what, next, what projects? The next project I have to do is go out and reorganize the garage here at the house. Yes. Just, just change winter tires on one car, summer tires. In other words, you might say domestic chores. Domestic chores, yes, indeed. If you live in a house, you've always got work to do. That's it. And so, Malcolm, it was it was a pleasure to I'm interview looking. you today. Okay, likewise. Thumbs <laughs> up. Which uh, ah, there we go. Thumbs up to you. All right. <laughs> but I, I but well, Mel, I wanted to to say again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your time today. Um, and congratulations. And um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Anything you'd like to add before we leave? Well, I think so. I think you've got it covered. You've done your <laughs> job. I've done my <laughs> job. We've accomplished what we set out to do. Yes. You yeah. have a good day and get to work. Yes, I will. Thank you, Malcolm. Okay. Bye for now.